היום אני רוצה לשתף אתכם בקטע מתוך פודקאסט שלם של קרוב לשעתיים שיעלה בקרוב שלי עם דוקטור קריס מאסטר ג'ון, למי שלא מכיר את קריס הוא אחד המוחות המבריקים ביותר והחוקרים המעניינים ביותר בתחום התזונה ותוספי תזונה בתקופה האחרונה World Wide. אז בקטע הזה שאני משתף היום אנחנו דנו באיזה תוספי תזונה חשובים לנשים בהיריון. זו שאלה שחוזרת המון בקליניקה, זו שאלה שחוזרת הרבה בקורסים, וזה באמת נושא חשוב. ולצערנו, הידע שיש לציבור וההנחיות שיש כיום, הממסדיות, אינן מספקות, ותשמעו את דעתי, תשמעו את דעתו של קריס. על הדרך, אנחנו נוגעים בעוד סוגיה, שהיא סוגיה מאוד מעניינת, מאוד חשובה, ונקדיש לה גם סרטון מלא בנפרד בהמשך, וזה איזה אומגה שלוש הכי נכון לקחת. האם ללכת על DHA או ללכת על ARLA, בתקווה שההמרה תהיה אכן מספקת. Most pregnant women in Israel will go into the uh, public uh, health care and they'll tell them, oh, you're pregnant, fantastic, you got to take omega-3s, you got to take uh, 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 whatever, uh, B12, iron, uh, folate, hopefully biofolate, you know, etc. And this is what you need in order to uh, have a healthy baby and also to sustain yourself on a better state after the, the pregnancy. I, I want to put a slightly different angle on the pregnancy thing. Um, these this pregnancy is 100% guided by a public health mindset that that tries to minimize rare problems by giving everyone supplements. And so, you know, for example, uh, I don't know what they do in Israel, but in the United States, they give babies vitamin K shots that are meant to save people. somewhere between one in 100,000 and one in 200,000 babies from rare brain bleedings. Uh, but folate is the same thing, right? Like, I don't remember off the top of my head what the incidence of neural tube defects was prior to the widespread recommendation of folate. But the widespread recommendation of folate to include in a prenatal vitamin is not based on everyone needing more folate. It's based on the rare, de- the rare neural tube defects in, Are prevented when everyone takes folate right so it's like a precaution th- huh it's like uh, we're doing it just in case I don't think they think like that the the p- public health conceives of populations as the unit of action and now I'm not I'm not saying that the average pregnant person doesn't need to watch their folate I'm just saying that it's the angle isn't that everyone needs the folate the angle is someone needs the folate and if yeah. everyone takes it someone's that that someone's gonna get it um you know that said i i, I think that <clears throat> i think that there you know there are things that um that pregnant women should just generally do and um i think folate is one of them but i i think there's a lot of uh points that aren't being hit Um, omega threes is a, is a good one. Um, but more pregnant women definitely need more choline and that's not being hit at all. They definitely need more biotin and that's not being hit. Um, they, a lot, a lot of pregnant women need more thiamine and molybdenum. And actually there's a very serious problem with pregnant women and, getting hallucinations that are probably from Wernicke's encephalopathy when they're pregnant and not telling anyone about it because they know that they'll be severely stigmatized for it. Um, and there are, there are people um, who I think who are at Brigham and, and Young uh, who work very closely with this issue and have, and have estimated that the proportion of, of women having hallucinations when they're pregnant is, way higher than the than the proportion that usually admit it um and a lot of the morning sickness that happens is is it's probably all connected so what happens is the placenta generates a lot of hydrogen sulfide which generates some sulfite and sulfite destroys thiamine and it destroys vitamin b6 and if you look at the studies on uh morning sickness they're 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 focused on trying to use b6 to help it But what ha- what is probably happening is the B6 is mopping up the extra sulfite and the 
the actual problem is the excess of sulfite is not being handled because uh, another thing that happens is the main places you get molybdenum, which is a mineral, are liver and legumes. And pregnant women don't don't eat liver. No one eats liver. And then pregnant women also don't like eating beans. Like generally their GI tract is much more sensitive. Yeah. And so they their diet becomes more restrictive. And so and it becomes lower and in... they have all kinds of stuff like that, which kind of makes them kind of choose their food in a different way. Right. And so they wind up having higher needs of certain things that their food choices are are not, to... you know, they're going in the opposite direction. Yeah. Um and so I think there's a there's a there's a giant need to address thiamine B6 and molybdenum in the context of placental sulfite generation that's totally unmet by current public health measures and I think in terms of the baby's brain um omega 3s is kind of, that's not even that's not universal at all but it, I think it's great that they're saying that but that's maybe, and maybe it's universal in Israel, but it's, it's definitely not universal in America um, or worldwide. Uh, but I think omega threes are important, but choline and biotin are also extremely important and they're not getting any attention. In yeah. fact, in the United States, when they were going through the last round of dietary guidelines, they were live broadcasting their meetings on the internet. And one of the things that came up was that they talked about the choline problem which is that all the data say people need, everyone needs more choline, but choline is primarily found in egg yolks. And we, we tell everyone that egg yolks are bad. So how can we get people to eat more choline without telling them that, they that we're reversing our recommendation about egg, egg yolks? <laughs> and so that's the choline problem, right? Up to me, that's a superfood and a whole egg is a superfood. If you ask me, it's like, well, I agree, but, but the but that that but that's not the the public health message yeah uh that's from from up across. from higher up so um I, I mean that's that's so that's what I wanted to say about pregnancy your question was about as people age but hold um, on you, you yeah, touched a really interesting subject and I'd like to kind of have some clarification yeah, about omega threes because omega threes we have ALA we have EPA we have DHA and uh, the only the DHA crosses the blood brain barrier. And it's just DHA. Brain. Some people say that you don't need to have that because the conversion of ALA is good enough. What's your take on that's that? That's crazy. Uh, that's crazy. No, uh, DHA. You just need DHA. So you think that the you're, you're, but there's no way to get DHA. Well, actually, that's not true. Like traditionally, there was really no way to get DHA without EPA. Uh, now you can get algal derived supplements, yeah. but but like if you're going to be evidence based you want to go with cod liver oil because the only, the only big long trials for long-term IQ is with cod liver oil. It's not with fish oil and it's not with algal oil. Um, and I don't know that you can discount the fat soluble vitamins in the cod liver oil. So my preference would be, would be getting omega threes from cod liver oil. Um, I think it's, you know, it's more consistent with the natural whole food thesis. It's more consistent with the evidence basis. Um, Although the evidence basis is highly biased by the studies that people decided to do, right? It's not like anyone tried algal oil for and looked at the four and seven year old IQ effects of using it, yeah. um, right? So I I can't say that cod liver oil is superior, but it is more it's more traditional, it's more whole food, it has a better rationale in terms of the broadness of the nutrients it supplies, and it is the only thing that's been actually shown to improve child IQ in in clinical trials. How about just eating cod liver? Yeah, I mean, right. Uh, cod liver oil was de was designed for its convenience, but you, you can just eat cod livers, and you're you're gonna get even more of a a nut broad nutrient profile. You'll get vitamin D. You'll get a lot of good stuff from it. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna close more than one uh, one angle. I agree with that. I, and there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. I mean, the most the most basic thing would be eat any liver and also eat fish, and you're you're also covering those bases. The theory that we can have just ALA and just uh, omega threes coming from plants, and our body will convert enough. You think that's? I I think 
the evidence is against it. I mean, there's a lot of papers showing the rate of conversion is really low, but it's also extremely non-robust to error. Uh, you know, all you got to do is get someone who has low Delta 60 saturase activity and then boom, it's worthless. Yeah. So it's just why I don't see why anyone would choose to do a less robust approach. This is like that vitamin C carnivore thing. Like, why are we talking about what's enough? Yeah. Because if you're if you're just getting what's enough, then all you need is one circumstantial thing that you didn't account for to make it not enough. Yeah. Like you should you should be getting the the best ro most robust. First of all, I agree absolutely. And another thing is, I had something like just ma making trying to use common sense and saying, well, if this person has any kind of condition that can be caused by uh, having not enough DHA, then why would I assume, why would I be so over optimistic thinking that his conversion is okay? I mean, how many people in the population do have a conversion that could? Uh, do the trick enough so that they could eat just vegan and have uh, uh, no fish oil and no algae and still get enough. It's, but it's worse than that because the studies consistently show the conversion is really low. I mean, so you can spin those and say, well, it's low because you don't need that much and you're just getting what your body requires, but it's, but it's really low. It's, it's not like there, the studies are out there showing like, the average person converts 99% of the ALA to DHA. They're what showing is, really... what is what is the average? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know, but it's towards the opposite end of that of that range. Yeah. Um, like, I, like I'm sure we could go online and get a meta meta analysis, but it's you know it's in the low single digit percents. Yeah. yeah. אוקיי, okay, אז עשינו בדיוק את זה, ועלינו אונליין לבדוק אה, מה המחקרים מספרים, מה המטה-אנליזות שיש על ההמרה של אומגה מסוג ALA עד ל-DHA דרך EPA. והאמת שאכן המספרים מאוד נמוכים, אה, זה עדיין יכול להיות מספק להרבה אנשים, אבל יש פה פקטור נוסף שחשוב מאוד להכיר אותו, רוב האנשים הדוגלים בתזונה טבעונית, הם בדרך כלל אוכלים כמות מאוד גבוהה של אומגה 6. אומגה 6 ואומגה 3 מתחרות אחת בשנייה וגם מסייעות אחת בשנייה. אך בנוכחות של יותר מדי אומגה 6, ההמרה פשוט לא תקרה. ולכן, או, או לא בצורה מספקת. ולכן צריך הרבה ידע כדי לעשות את זה בצורה הנכונה. אני אדבר על זה בצורה מאוד מאוד רחבה בקורס טוטו וולנס שעולה ב-2024. ולבינתיים אני מקווה שקיבלתם מושג על... מה נכון לנשים בהיריון, ותשאלו אותי, למי שלא באמת מומחה בתחום ויודע לעשות את זה כמו שצריך, הפתרון הקל והפשוט ביותר זה לאכול דגים, לאכול כבד קוד, ומי שקשה לו עם הטעם של הדגים או מכל סיבה אחרת, הוא קצת, הוא בהחלט יעשה את העבודה.